Hello everyone, Chuck Northside Guy. Today featuring recent T206 pickups and some interesting stories uh, of uh, the T206 collection. Uh, as those of you who have watched uh, recent videos of my T206 collecting know that I'm kind of feeling my way forward but finding kind of my groove in terms of collecting these cards in a you know, mid-grade, PSA 5 and 6. Uh, I'm looking for well-centered examples. I'm looking for rare examples. And I continue. it's a set that just continues to delight in all of its nuance. And uh, I picked up uh, quite a number of cards that are the finest examples with none graded higher. And uh, that's just thrilling to have in a collection when we're living in an era of manufactured scarcity. It's nice to, uh, you know, not nice, it's more than nice. It's amazing to find real scarcity that's over 100 years old. Well, um, in, in this uh, video, let me, uh, I, have, I have quite a few little ins and outs and, 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 and a story to tell. So let's just dive right in. First of all, this Nick Maddox is a polar bear back. It is um, part of the Charles Bray collection. And hold that thought. We're going to talk about that uh, Charles Bray collection. Um, this is uh, graded a PSA 5. It's the only example of Nick Maddox in a PSA 5. And none are graded higher. Uh, in the middle uh, is a card I picked up in a recent heritage auction of the Powell Miller uh, collection. Uh, that was being broken up. Um, and a uh, very famous collection uh, by... a uh, an attorney in Detroit. Uh, these cards have been displayed at the Detroit Institute of a Museum of Art for the past few years, and now they've been sold. I'm very grateful to have um, this card. Uh, again, it's a, a PSA 6. It's a Piedmont back, uh, so much more common. However, none, uh, this is, an, you know, there's only one graded 6, and there's none graded higher. So keeping up that trend. So at this point in my collection, a T206, Half my cards are um, in that kind of none higher category, uh, and that's uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to keep going on those auctions. Um, really think um, uh, that's uh, it's just something I think is real special, and adds another layer of appreciation for me as I collect this set and learn about it. Finally, is just a card I couldn't resist. It's it's uh, it's uh, the only one graded a PSA 6. There is one graded higher, so I wasn't able to get the very highest example, but it, I found this card just irresistible. It's so well-centered. Uh, I think the registration is great, and it's just a great-looking card, and I wanted this portrait as part of my collection. So, uh, uh, and I got that. That was also part of the Powell Miller um, set, and I picked that up uh, at the recent Heritage election. So what I'd like to do now is kind of shift gears a little bit. Um, I've been purchasing cards off of Heritage when I see these famous um, collect sets like the David Hall collection, the Powell Miller collection, uh, being broken up. Um, and I also picked up this Charles Bray collection. And uh, so we see a polar bear back, two Piedmonts, and an old mill that's off-centered there. And uh, I have featured uh, some of these cards in earlier videos, but I wanted to feature all four of them together. They're all from the Charles Bray collection. And I think, if you don't know, I think it's really interesting to know, you know, who is Charles Bray? Um, he was one of the hobbies, our hobbies, first auctioneers, and he was a full-time dealer, the first full-time dealer of baseball cards. And he was active from the 1930s to the 1950s and collaborated with Jefferson Burdick, who was a famous kind of founder and assembler of, of early uh, baseball cards. And famously, his collection was curated at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, where um, several years ago I, I saw an exhibit uh, featuring uh, these vintage cards. And I was just blown away by the 1933 Gaudi in particular, and that set me back into the hobby and, um, you know, the joys of, of collecting baseball cards, vintage baseball cards. And um, so Jefferson Burdick and Charles Bray were thick as thieves. Uh, Jefferson Burdick famously compiled the American Book of Checklists, 
which was the, the first baseball kind of collection book. Uh, think of it as an early Beckett's guide, if you will. Which, But it, instead of pricing, it just featured checklists of various tobacco sets from the late uh, 19th century and early 20th century. And, um, you know, he, he uh, Burdick was the one who you know, gave the name that we call, you know, when we say T206 uh, for this collection. Well, he was the one who, you know, gave definition to these various tobacco and candy sets from the early vintage era. So he and, and uh, Jefferson Burdick and Charles Bray were uh, two leading fathers of our hobby. Um, and, um, you know, aside from Charles Bray, there really weren't many dealers uh, of vintage cards in the 1950s. So when Charles Bray passed away, his collection of T206 cards um, was busted up in auction, and you see them noted, and maybe some of you have these in your own collections, because he had many of these cards. And I just think that's uh, yet another interesting and uh, fun angle. Um, you know, as I reflect on modern baseball cards and wonder you know, what is the impact of a partial season on the ability of statistics in modern players and, and, and what's going to happen, in, you know, next season if, if the, the virus, you know, continues to impact the game, which I'm sure it will. Um, how is that going to impact the, co you know, compilation of statistics of guys that are, you know, in the prime of their careers like Trout? Uh, obviously a Hall of Famer, but these many players are missing uh, an opportunity to compile statistics. And I just wonder if that's going to have an impact on, 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 on modern card collecting um, if the game is so impaired. And so as I reflect on that and see the craziness of modern card collecting, and I'm a participant in that as well, by the way, with my kids, uh, I, I just think these vintage cards provide um, a lot of the joys of collection collecting. Um, I just love these cards. Um, you hear everyone who collects these T206 you know, talk about the joy of just holding one of these cards and being proud of it in their collection. And, you know, isn't that what we're all here for is, is, is the love of these cards. So um, anyway, enough of my rambling. Hope you enjoyed the cards I featured today and some of these interesting, I think, interesting stories. Um, just there's so much nuance and uh, in the T206, and I, I just love it. And I'm going to stay on this path and stay tuned. Take good care, everyone. Bye-bye.